To the unpredictability of Lexer's behavior, listener discretion is advised. The VOT Network presents The Voices of Terminus Show with your hosts, Mel Lexer and Joshua. Welcome to the Voice of Terminus show, everybody. Lexa does Shut not up, wish Jordan, to alarm me. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Lex doesn't <laughs> wish to alarm me. <laughs> if the sh stream is choppy, it's not on our end. So there, before anybody starts complaining. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the Voice of Terminus show. I'm Janilla, joined by Micah. Say hello. And Josh. Hey, guys. Alex. You jerks woke me up from my sleep. And in the background we have Shy. Hello. And with us today we have Booch. Hello. And we'll be sitting down with him like we told you guys last week. We, we, we had it planned to sit down with him last week. But uh, we decided to go with the um, VR stream and break that down. And um, Booch had time this weekend to... Uh, Sit down with us and get this player Q and A going. We've been good man, uh, good man. looking forward to this, so you're going to get to get to know Booch a little bit more. So, uh, Micah, you want to shoot us off? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> shoot us off? Is that, uh, that's how we're starting us off. Shoot us off. <laughs> oh, I, I got to tell you the one thing, the first yarn. 
Do you realize that in the color coding, you have Micah as at the top it says Micah is in red, and then Yarnilla is in red. Yeah, but, but his but cut is purple. It's in a different color. It's called. It's purple. It's called a mind fuck. <laughs> I, th I think it, I think it's called an. There goes the monetization. <laughs> oh my god! Oh god, we're gonna be poor! Oh my god! Oh my god! My millions we play. Whatever will I do? <laughs> Alrighty, so Booch, why don't you give us some insight into your gaming background? Okay, gaming background. Uh, can I phone a friend? For this one? No, no, okay. no you can't use your so, Goku in the first question. I I had um first first gaming console was my Atari twenty six hundred. Then I think we had Intellivision, ColecoVision, Nintendo, uh Sega Genesis. I'm probably gonna forget something in there. I had a I had a uh when I was in the in the service I bought overseas a a Philips CD-ROM based uh, video console. I can't remember the name of it. It was awful, but it had that Dragon's Lair and Space Ace. It had that on there. Nice. Then I had a uh, PlayStation, PlayStation Two, and then my first PC. I had a uh, Commodore sixty four, and then my father actually was working for a company that was trying to get into selling PCs. So he was actually trying to sell Amiga and a data processor back then. So we had I had an Amiga, and then probably '95 or so, I started buying. I bought a couple PCs off of through my father from a company he had uh, dealt with. Yeah. And then uh, I started playing online games. I started. I think the first RPG I played was probably Ultima Online, and then. Uh, Late '90s, I started building my own systems because I, I, you know, anything foreign to you, you're kind of a little intimidated by. It. But then once I realized how, you know, pretty basic a, a computer really is, yeah. then I started building my own. And then I, you know, then we went into EverQuest. And uh, even while I was playing EverQuest, uh, my brother also played with with me. And uh, from there, every new MMO that came out, we would try it out. And uh, I tried them all. I probably, you know, I went to Vanguard, Age of Conan. All the while I was staying with EverQuest. Um, I tried EQ2 for a little bit. I tried WoW for a little bit. Um, uh, Lord of Rings Online, I tried that. I tried Black Desert. I mean, I, you know, I played almost everything there was. And then I kept, you know, I'd play something for a little while and I'd always go right back to EQ. You know, yeah. so that's basically my background right there in a nutshell. Nice, very good. Yeah, um, which platform did you like the best, though? Um, you know, there's something to be said for a console and and the PC. I mean, I've I don't know. I'm kind of hooked on it now. You know, because um. I mean, forever. Just because of the, just because EQ was so immersive when it was so unique at the time, and it was like the biggest thing and the best thing for so long, forever I always will compare everything to EverQuest. I mean, it's just the natural progression of things. So, uh, you know, that's the that's the long and short of it, right there. I'd like I'd like to just say that recently Black Desert Online was free on Steam, and I told people it still wasn't worth it. <laughs> 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 well, well, this my my brother when when he got out of uh, when he stopped playing EQ, he got in with a guild, and uh, we were playing. I believe it was Vanguard, and that's like I don't know if you remember Lex, but when I first saw the very first BOT show, I told my brother, I said, "Hey, I think that dude that was in the Vanguard guild, this is on a show on about Pantheon," and he, because the guy sounded just like you, and I sent you a, I sent you a message, and I said, "Hey, did you?" Were you on Vanguard when it first launched and this and that? Did you have a was your wife a healer and you were a tank? And you're like, no, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. But <laughs> but, this, but anyway, anyway, whatever you're smoking, I want. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the way it went. But there was, you know, that was the uh, that's the coincidence. You know, the coincidence of it that you know there was a guy in, in in Vanguard that he sounded like Lex, and we used to literally spend more time just like theory crafting about what the ultimate game would be more than actually playing the game because you know vanguard when it launched it was so buggy you'd be running through a you know a chunk and you'd 
go to there was no zone so you, you go to continue and next thing you know you're crashed or you're locked up you know it was awful <laughs> Uh, yes. I will say though, it really does sound like me. Mm. Yeah. And my wife played a healer in WoW. But my brother said, "No, man, that dude was would probably be like sixty years old." And I was like, "Oh yeah, you're right. That was." Well, he looks good for his age. Well, actually, well, actually, 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 yeah, so there you go. And you always <laughs> eat as much as you like with buffets. That's no, right. That's, that's why I was I mean, this, this guy, I mean, he sounded like you, and he was um, he was actually developing a game at the time. You know, he had, like, all the, he would be, he was going into crazy detail about, you know, when you go into a, into a camp, you know, rather than just have these mobs standing there, if they're, like, a knoll or something, they should be, you know, doing what gnolls do. And if they're mm -hmm. cold, they should be, and I was like, man, that makes sense to me. Up to no yeah. good? Yeah, right. Oh, damn. Oh, that's that's terrible. a dad joke. Oh, that's <laughs> terrible. Whew. Right, so that's the next t-shirt uh, going out. <laughs> up, up to no good. <laughs> yeah. Thank thank God my time is limited because I, I want that shirt. No, that's going to be your gift. That's going to be your going away no, gift, dude. Not. <laughs> no, the hell it is not. Hey, you know uh, what, Lex? We're going to have to do a giveaway, though, when you go away. Like, you know, get some get some of those I Love Paladin t-shirts put out there. Uh, God, no. <laughs> we need to Although I will say, if you do, if you do make a, a shirt like that, you need to put, like, Fippy on the back. No, yeah, it's Fippy Dark Oh, I might yeah. shoot, though. <laughs> From who? From which captain? <laughs> <laughs> Daybreak Games isn't a thing anymore. SOE oh, isn't a thing Paw. anymore. Now it's Dark Paw Games, Dark and they're Paw too busy Game. trying to figure out how to screw people over again. Just, just sure. rather, rather call it Frippy Dark, uh, Frippy Dad Paw. There you Get go. Something Get something going. So, because these lives matter. Exactly. <laughs> What was it from Pantheon that had you personally invested in the in uh, other MMOs currently in development? Well, um, initially, um, it was because of Brad McQuaid. So mm -hmm. as soon as I heard that Brad McQuaid was the was the, it was his you know his baby, I immediately immediately was on board. You know, even though even though Vanguard had issues, um, I always thought like. If that game was given the proper development time, it would have been like the game we played after EQ, and everyone would have, you know, it, it had the. I thought that game had a great potential. So when I heard that um, that you know Brad was creating another game and he got a bunch of developers together, I was like immediately on board. And uh, so my brother told me about it because, like, going back to I was telling you that Guildy was in. Basically, he's been running with the same group of people from Vanguard through all these games. Like, I think he was playing uh, Black Desert Online, but he was playing it when it was still like in Korea. They got some kind of a proxy server or something. But anyways, he he let me know he and about I think that was probably like 2000, early 2015, maybe late 2014, and uh, I signed up. I went on the website and I looked at the forums a little bit. It was kind of sparse at that time. But then I, I immediately pledged, and then uh, I would every once in a while I'd come back in and see, you know, like um, uh, just to check up, you know, any kind of updates or anything like that. And uh, I, the, this show, VOT, was one of the first shows that I, you know, when I started my getting more interest in the in the game, uh, I started watching your videos. I started watching Nathan Napalm, and I started watching Chris Kane, and. Uh, you know, I said to my, I was saying to myself, you know, this game and just the community, it deserves more intent, more, more of my attention. So that's when I started to like, you know, get involved a little bit more involved because there's like uh, a much lower amount of, uh, I guess you would say toxicity in this, in this community than you get elsewhere, you know, other than Reddit, of course. But I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's basically why I, you know, that's what basically hooked you know, it was the combination of those things. I think we've trashed everything today. <laughs> we've drawn, yeah. every, we drawn everything through the mud today. <laughs> yeah. What? We're not the only ones that think Reddit's a cesspool either. 
<laughs> well, I mean, that's, I mean, it's a, it's the troll breeding grounds. You know, you get. Mm -hmm. you know, Try and sue us. I'm in Europe. <laughs> Try and sue us. I don't care. Yeah, right. What are you going to get? You can have those right. posters on the wall back there. Right. Oh. So, in, in the event that someone wanted to send you a strippergram, do you mind sharing where in the world you are? And we've also, uh, and we've also uh, <laughs> basically broken the PG-13 rules. <laughs> you did? <laughs> what was it I am, I am in Connecticut. Connecticut, All right. USA. Got to write that down. I, I grew up here. <laughs> I, uh, I was in the Marine Corps out of high school. So then I, after I got out, I went, I was in California for a little while. I spent some time in Florida, North Carolina, and then I came back here. So I've been, you know, basically here for the last 20 years. Cool. Home sweet home. Very nice. <laughs> I feel bad if you haven't been in Florida. I've been there. <laughs> I, I was there, uh, what year was that? 90, 92, something like that. For probably six months, I... I, went, I was there. Just, I was in Miami, actually. So any place I've been to in America. So I'm going to well, go. And, I, I wanted to just tell you it is not representative of the rest of the country. Yeah, I wouldn't have painted a great picture for the USA. <laughs> that was it. I'm going go to go uh, and the so I was rephrase like, this question a bit now because you already kind of mentioned when you kind of started jumping in um, so after you basically found out about Pantheon and started looking into it which of the tenants basically stood out for you the most oh definitely the um, going back to the group content you know meeting to group and the social aspects of it that type of game because you know all the games you know most of the games after eq it was you know you could get it through you could get through it solo you know wow and and rift you could like you know you could rip down eight mobs you know you know a couple seconds so when they started you know when they started talking about okay we're going to make group content we're going to make it more group centered game and uh a more social uh you know, community mattered, and it's the social aspects of the game. That's what really uh, got me, you know, even more interested. But I, I you know, I knew that um, from the get-go because Brad was involved in it, and uh, I knew the type of game he was going to try to make. He was going to try to make a difficult game that, you know, you, you're you going to have to earn everything you get in the game, which is what I want, you know, because at the end of the day, when you, when you take down a boss or you take down, or you're in a raid and you take down a raid boss, you feel like you actually accomplished something instead of, you know, going out in the world and, you know, going to a zone by yourself and pulling like, you know, eight bombs and standing up against the wall and just wiping them out, mob at, you know, white wave after wave after wave. That just sounds, that just seems so monotonous. You know, there's no sense of accomplishment there. Mm. <clears throat> so are you happy with the new format of delivering the news and updates on their bi-weekly streams? Um, well, I think, you know, to be honest, I think it's, I think it's a little bit of overkill because I think it, uh, it puts VR at, um, like so much pressure on them because, you know, people are expecting some big reveal every two weeks. And then when it doesn't come about, you get all these people disappointed and saying, you know, when is this game going to finally come out? They're so far from a, from even alpha, they didn't show us anything we haven't already seen, you know, st stuff like that. I don't, you know, I don't think it's practical to expect them to reveal something different every two weeks. You know, even though I, I personally think rather than like trying to showcase something and go over and over things like, look, this is what we did here. This is what we did there every, you know, every two weeks. I think it would go further to pump out like, oh, did I say pump out? Yeah. You Pump did. Little, we're, we're, little, we're not PG thirteen, so go yeah. for it. Go for it. Knock yourself out, buddy. <laughs> you know, Pump out like you know, just a little bit of maybe just a little bit of lore, like a teaser of a mob or an NPC, or um, even like a player character model. Just a little quick reveal where you where you like show, you know, whatever the mob's name is. This is so and so brimstone barnstormer. And this is, you know, and then just people be like, oh, I wonder what that dude's story is, you know, but at least you're, you're given like a little bit of a teaser 
uh, along the way. And then, of course, when there is a milestone, stream have a stream and showcase the, you know, the actual pro mm. the progress. That's you know that there's some meat and potatoes there. You know. Yeah. I think that you know I think that would go that would appease the masses a little bit better than you know expecting them to pull something out of their ass every two weeks when you know it, I I don't see that being practical. You know. Mm. Yeah. True. I gotta admit I've been kind of worried about it too, but uh, it seems to be doing all right. Yeah, yeah I'm getting. So uh, wait till they start running out of content like we did a while back. And I think I think basically, you know, that you know, this was ultimately the original goal from the get go. It's just that basically they had to have the content there or or the um, individual pieces there to go and, you know, get into this format. So I'm pretty sure that they've got enough stuff in the pipeline to uh, ship out. It's just that they had to get to that point where where it became viable and worthy to do it. And don't forget now, um, I, I'm not sure, but uh, I don't want to alarm people. But I think you know when the when the uh, convention season start coming along, which is pretty much you know starts this month or basically next month, um, it might quieten down for a bit because they're going to obviously be busy promoting their game on the outside at these conventions, getting people drawn in. So, you no, know, but I think it's, it was it was something well prepared. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I honestly, I don't think they had to go. I mean, it was great that they did. I don't think they had to go into such detail of the creation of the zone. And all. I mean, it was great that they did it. But I, I mean, I would be happy if they just said, look, this is what we've done with this little this little part of Fairtail. This is what we've done, this little area. This is what a typical perception system quest is going to be like. This is what a typical extreme climate is going to look like. We also have four more zones just like this. They don't look just like this, but they're developed at this point to the same point. I mean, that, I'd be happy with that. I mean, I don't need to actually physically. Actually, I don't want to see everything because I want to be able to log in and see stuff for myself for the first time. Yeah, but the problem, yeah. Yeah, the problem is, though, you know, we might see it all like that, but the majority of people unfortunately don't you know they're, they're you know they're they're, they're they're they have a biased nature they want more and more and if you don't mm -hmm. give it to them then you know it's it's doom and gloom and it's you know it, it's it's vapor yeah. where it's this and that and that's the un unfortunate truth you know we understand I mean, the that's... process and uh you know we're supporting the team and we you know we're happy with less but the majority I mean, unfortunately a isn't lot of pressure like you know realistic i don't know enough lex you'd know me obviously I mean, what can you actually do in two weeks that you can physically show, you know, okay, this is what we did. We did this and then have a half hour stream on it. Is it even, I mean, is that even practical? Well, with my experience with this, like, they, you know, we know VR has a small team. We all know I'm part of Defend the Night. And that, that's a crazy small team. And they do weekly updates on Twitter to show off things. Sometimes it's maybe two or three abilities. Maybe it's a new section of a dungeon or what have you. Right. The, I think the thing that is the saving grace right now for VR's uh, bi-weekly updates is that they're short shows. They're short and they're sweet. They're, the, they're to the point. So I think right. if they were ever to try to go for longer shows, there's no way it could be bi-weekly. Bi just there's just no way there wouldn't be enough there wouldn't be enough content for them to right show. i think with the schedule hey. of their their team this is probably the best option for them i was admittedly just afraid when they first announced it that every two weeks would be a little too hard for everybody to get uh, uh to get dedicated hosts and to have continual stuff to talk about without spilling all the details you know right right that's the key too you know i mean what well, i can see where they're coming from too they don't want to give you they don't want to show you everything they're doing i mean because right. then it spoils it for those of us that don't want to see everything you know right. those of us that want to you know i want to experience it's it's a very it's almost like blocking a tightrope too much to one right. side and you're yeah, going to yeah. fall on your ass and it's, and it's one of yeah. those things that you know obviously does concern them as well you know, we know that they would love to tell us, 
they would love to show us, you know, but they got to keep they but they got to keep it tight, you know, and um, keep it under under wraps and behind the scenes and. They they would love to spill it all, but you know it, it's 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 like Lex said, you know you you can only go so far without you know creating some kind of damage because that's what will end up right. happening at the end. Right, and then of course you know the other the other side of the coin is then you know people will only go so far on faith. Yeah. You know we're all in the same we're all in the same pool. We're thinking, look, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I'll hold on and I'll just keep backing them. You know, up until it, the boat either uh, sails or sinks. You know, right. I mean, that's basically the way. That's the way that I look at it. Right. Look, I'm going to keep backing them, and because what the hell do I have to lose? The thing is, yeah, I'm sure, I, money, money, but I mean, they're still printing that every day. Thing is, though, you know, so what, gamers, you know, we've got a we've got an evil nature. You know, we <laughs> can, <laughs> more and, people. and we <laughs> can, and we can, you know, anybody that <laughs> trashes. Any game out there, right? Anybody that's trashed a game out there, an MMO, you doesn't matter what it was. We've all we've all done that. We've all talked smack about these games, and we've all I've cursed, done it today. We've cursed about <laughs> our games that we play. We play it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Right, and and right, any right. any press, good or bad, is good press. <sighs> period. Yeah, I think True. the problem when they re when they announced it was the fact that a lot of us content creators were coming out of were basically sick and tired of the dry spell, and then we go from you know radio silence for several months, like over six months of virtual radio silence, besides you know kind of BS Twitter things, to okay every two weeks we're going to do a video news video newsletter update, and we're all sitting there going. You know, in part, we're blaming ourselves because it's like we don't, we didn't want to put that much stress on you. Right, right. We want, but we were to the point where we're frustrated. We want information. We yeah. want to stay excited so we can keep your fans excited and to draw in more fans. And yes. like, like personally, I know I was, I was a very vocal person on that front about Jesus, give us something, right? Yeah. I would have been perfectly happy with a monthly update. That's what I was just going to say. Even if they would have given a, a meaningful monthly up, like I, I, you know, when I first started, like looking back, you know, maybe the last eight months or so, if you look at some of those those monthly updates, there was like nothing in them. It was like a bunch of BS. But if they gave a, an actual meaningful update every month, then, you know, you're, you know, you're given a little, you know, given breadcrumbs. That's all we want is a few breadcrumbs here and there. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to, you know, you also don't want smoke blowing up your ass either. You know, right. you know what we, I mean? We went from starving to here's a four course meal. Right. You went from you went from famine to feast, basically. Yeah, but, and now like, they got to keep putting food on the table. Right. And a lot of us are concerned that they're basically going to run out of food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I, I mean. And, and, you know, it's you can we can go around all night about it. It's just and when it doesn't and when they don't produce what people are expecting. You're gonna get all the. I mean, anyone that's on the on the fence, you know, a, 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 a potential troll, they're gonna come out of the woodwork. Ah, oh, Jesus, look at that! What they're showing us stuff that they showed us two years ago. You know, you get all them guys coming out of the. Woodwork. Oh, oh yeah, trust me. Every time they do a a stream of Black Rose Keep or How Near's yeah. Cave or Amber Faith, that you know what this? Do you know, do you so know what? You. <laughs> right. <laughs> You, you two, you, you, you and Boots, Lex, right? I've got, I just got this scene from Lethal Weapon, Joe Pesci, right? <laughs> Lethal <laughs> Weapon, <laughs> where, he's, where, he's, where he's on the phone, he phones up Martin <laughs> Riggs, and he's like, you know, ah, you're a telephone, you guy, who's... aren't you? Oh, yeah. You know, the phone is smaller. Who's... And then, you know, back and forth. Back and forth. <laughs> I don't the question know. is, who is who, though? <laughs> Who's who? <laughs> I'm going to say, right, Boots is Joe Pesci and you're Martin Riggs, buddy. <laughs> okay, I'll be, I'll be, okay, I'll be Joe Pesci. <laughs> they're not really a wrong answer there because they're both great. That's racist. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> right, oh, God. Bring us on. Bring but, us on, John. But, uh, okay, let's I'll go. I'll end it with on. just as long as they can keep, keep coming with the info and not putting themselves in a bad position, I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically, yeah, so, I get it. So, Boots, you have a, a big connection with the law, um, but we'll discuss that a little bit later. But um, from the racial law that VAR have pushed out, uh, which one is your favorite so far? 
racial lore probably um believe it or not i'm not usually a big dwarf fan but the um the dwarf the dwarf racial uh, racial lore to me was one of the more uh, interesting stories you know how the uh how the god yeah. took a piece of the cold dark well the piece of the mountain and a, and a piece of ice and he pressed it together and it forged you know it formed the first dwarf and you know so basically the the cold dark steel is is part of the that every dwarf's makeup you know i thought that whole story was was pretty cool and it was it was short you know it was short and sweet which i thought enough was probably one of the you know <laughs> enough you know, with the dwarf the jokes dude <laughs> big dwarf <laughs> short ones. sweet you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know that and you know and really like um the idea of the of the cold dark steel is pretty genius that mm -hmm. you know it gives it gives the game more of an identity you know, because you have this uniqueness of an of an actual, you know, created, you know, created element that's just this game specific, and there's a whole there's a whole story behind it. So that was, you know, to me, that's pretty genius right there. Yep. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, after minutes, I thought you were gonna be like, I don't usually say this, but I like the scar. Oh, <laughs> I was no. like, my man. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh well. We all know that VR has said that, you know, your characters are going to be good, evil, or neutral. You know, it is a pretty standard kind of design to it. But they've also said that that's not going to impact game, like, your, your group, ability to group with others. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if you think that maybe in this day and age, we, we almost require a little deeper character development that's just based off of your alignment. And if so, how could you see that possibly affecting groups? So I'm thinking to go into a little theory crap. I would I would think that the way they have these these different tenants set up. So you have, you know, you have a crafting system, you have a, a deep lore system, you have the perception system. You know, I think if they tried to almost intertwine all of those all of those systems with your individual character and his racial makeup you could you could cross you, know, you, you could almost crisscross all everyone's advancement in the in the game so i mean for example like um the epic abilities okay so for example we'll, we'll use a paladin for example because the paladin can only be a human and a dwarf so you you go through a quest line either by a perception system quest or just a, a, the old st old school NPC. You get your you know you go towards your epic ability. You get your epic ability. Now you've 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 achieved enough where your guild master, as a human, says go to the dwarven city of Kadasa, see the dwarven guild master. You go there, you see the dwarven paladin guild master. He gives you another series of epic epic quests about another series of quests towards another epic ability now if each if each race had that same si similar uh, linear storyline that branched off you could have the the good and the bad both intersecting for a common goal like you could have an npc where you know as a as a human i need you know a drop from him a, a part of his his tooth and as a as an evil race i need to speak to this person and, and, you know, convince him to give me X towards my quest. So you could actually, you know, now you could fuse all the different races, good or bad, to a common goal. And now when you're out adventuring, everyone in the group's got a vested interest in the same goal. It's not It's not like, well, I go, oh, hey, Lex, hey, you're, I need a drop from this guy. And you're like, oh, Jesus, what do you want to, you know, we don't want to kill that, you know. You, now, if we all need something from that guy, because all these stories eventually intertwine, mm -hmm. now it's everyone's gonna, you know, everyone makes out, you know, so everyone's got a vested interest to go take out this boss. I'm making out with you. Know what, you. Know what, I'm saying? <laughs> you know? <laughs> what has happened to this show? Jesus. I know. We've gone off. We've gone off on tangents. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, yeah, that's the that's like I mean that's a lot of theory craft, but that's what I'm you know I think. You know, if they could get a, they could do something like that. Like I always thought, when they started with this epic abilities, and then people said, "Well, they're going to be epic weapons, and uh, an epic armor, or something like that." Like 
the the ideal way I would want to do it is I would say, like I was just like I just said, you you know you you get your epic abilities. Now you've factioned enough where your guild leader, whoever. Okay, now you you know you have you've proven yourself. Now you can get your epic weapon quest, and then you know that also would tie in with the racial passives because now as a human, you know people that that you roll the human tune. Now you're bitching because the 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 dwarf has you know different racial passives that you particularly you like more. But now if you do that that the way I was telling, now you have to go faction with the dwarves. Now who's to say when you gain full faction with the dwarves, you don't get the you don't gain the ability to like take on that racial passive of a dwarf and add that to your to your tune. Yeah. So now you have the racial passive of a human. And Interesting. As an added tough quested ability, you know. Cool. So that's, the, that's one. That's one for Joppa to put in his. Joppa, <laughs> smoke it. Put that in your notebook. Joppa, Joppa get that to the Joppa. <laughs> get to the Joppa, Joppa, get to the Joppa. No. So, uh, we know that you know major, you know main city hubs, global major cities play a you know a large part in most of today's MMOs. Trying to connect the players a lot faster, you know, instead of having them start out in you know their own major city. But we know that VR are trying to lean towards the latter of uh, each race having its own starting area. But do you think they will be able to maintain this in the years to come, or will we end up having main hubs throughout the world that we would, you know, the, the, the evil races have one there, the neutral races have a major city, and the good races might have one. And uh, how would you try and prevent something like that? Well, knowing the track record, I'm going to say the chances, the odds are that it is going to be like a major hub, like you're saying. It, it mm -hmm. happens in every game, you know? But I think the key would be is uh, VR needs to keep the starting cities relevant. You have to figure some way out for each of those starting cities to remain relevant after everyone gets the level 25 to 30, you know, because you know how it is everywhere you, yeah. you know, start adventuring, you leave your, you leave your home city, then you, you hardly ever go back there. Mm -hmm. So they have to make it either by um, something to do with crafting or uh, faction, or perhaps like I was saying, the, the epic quest where, you know, you, you have to actually go to this starting city to speak to this NPC or, you know, you can't, you can't get the epic quest or um, where the lore takes you there. And uh, I think, was it Vanguard that had the, um, you, if you factioned enough, you could go to an, another race's home city and they would actually give you the, uh, the crafting recipe for like the armor. Like if you were a human, you could go, you could eventually get enough faction and go to, you know, where the, the orcs, the orcs home city there, and you could actually make orcish armor. So they could do something like that, where you actually you, know, you have to go to this these starting cities to faction, and then you you know have different armor types. So you could make elven armor, which a human can wear. You could make dwarven armor, which a, which a human can wear, and vice for you know and vice versa, and uh, almost like a cultural armor. But instead of just the race wearing it, you can make it for any race. So that would be the key. You have to keep it somehow relevant. So you need to go to these cities. Well, on that note, too, they could, instead of, like, making, like, a main good hub, main evil hub and stuff like that, they could just make one city with, like, a shady area. And, like, yeah. Like, we're, like, we're, we're gonna gonna buy kidneys. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, that's where you'd find, that's like where the... you'd find Lexa in the shady area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so you want to buy us. Line, people having to go to, like, the black market to do something shady right. and having that conflict. And then but that would add another story element in there. Exactly. Yeah. You want to you want to breathe underwater? I got a pair of gills right here. Got <laughs> <laughs> a seaweed for you. Yeah. <clears throat> right. So we got a glance at the living codex in the last stream. Would you find it interesting to have something similar for the race advancement? Maybe you could deepen some of your more personal passive abilities. Maybe say a halfling with a knack for to nature coming naturally together. Maybe more. Or foster, but with something like the Living Codex, you could expand you know, even further. What do you think about that? I know, you know, I I never really thought about that because usually, you know, in a game, 
you know, your your initial racial passage, once you get out of, like, level 10, they're, like, irrelevant. You know, you get top gear, and it's, you know, you, you're not getting any benefit from this, this extra two decks or whatever you get. But uh, I, I think it's a great idea. I mean, that it does make a lot of sense that, you know, as you level your tune, your tune's getting stronger, you're skilling up all these other skills. Why wouldn't you be able to skill up your, you know, why wouldn't your racial, racial passive skill up? as well exactly so exactly. I, I think they you know there could be room say in that in that codex for a tab with racial passives on it and then going forward as you up as just like you can upgrade your spells they could implement something that you can upgrade your racial yeah, passives. points or something like that. right yeah. exactly even, yeah. even if you just added a couple because you know they're saying each point is supposed to matter in this game you're not going to have massive amounts of points mm. so you know one yeah. or two extra and whatever Ability could make a big difference. Yeah, yeah it would be easy to implement as well because you could you could just tell your fans that like the 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 stats that you've given already are just up to that point. I mean, right? Because it's 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 you know it's no different than like in you know real life or anything. You you know you're constantly learning. You know you 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 learn in life Not experience if I can help it. and everything. So imagine, let's say you know, just take the example of the halflings. You know, the halflings have a, have a knack for nature. Maybe they have, you know, um, a run speed bonus. But now it's not something that they have straight away. They have a minimal run speed, or they have this buff for run speed. But, you know, the older they get, so basically you level, you level up, the more points you can put towards that. So you can reach a certain amount of speed. So not every halfling is going to have a run speed passive buff that is like, you know, 20% faster. One might have right. only fifteen percent, or the other one might only have seven percent, and the other one's got twenty. So it's it, it gives you variety as well, and it makes each of those races, you know, the player characters, unique as well. Because that's one thing that's always bugged me about every MMO out there. They all scream the same, the same message: "Come play our MMO, where your character <laughs> is absolutely unique." Yeah, no, right. it's not. just like everybody else. He's just like the guy next exactly. door. Yeah, exactly. Well, the other thing is too, you could, in theory, I mean, at certain levels, and if you did skill up in whatever skill you can, you know, you could think that would kind of um, relate to that racial passive, you could actually unlock more. So rather than just the the whatever, however many they gave, two or four, what they could they could expand upon it. So mm -hmm. something like. Um, uh you know a racial passive like even something just that would do with one of your spells you know say you're a shaman and you're in your racial passive is some kind of a vengeful a vengeful uh disposition say where now rather than your dot lasting 60 60 seconds your dot lasts 65 because mm -hmm. you have this you know you have this pissed off disposition and your dot lasts just a little bit long i you think know, a lot like of that. i think a lot of developers don't realize that in order to make a lot of variation between the same character class, it doesn't take much. And it right, doesn't yeah, always right, throw right. things way out of balance. Like you said, it goes from like, you know, maybe it goes from 45 seconds to 55 seconds. You know, right. is it really that big of a deal when it's a dump? You know, if it's a newt that you can spam over and over, then there's a simple way to balance that out. It does more damage, but costs a little more now too. Of course, right, right. You know, right. And then I mean, you could do and think of think of the, the all the different abilities that are like that are class uh, that are classic abilities for for each of these classes, like a bash ability, say. So, okay, now whatever race you want to give the the you know the little advantage to the to sword and board. You could have the bash stun the mob for an additional 0.5 seconds. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And now, okay, so I'm so adept with this shield because I'm a dwarf, say, that when I smack him in the face, it's going to stun him for a half a second more. I mean, in the long run, does that really, does it really, you know, put the game out of balance? No, you know, but it's something cool that you're like, oh, look, because I'm a dwarf, I can stun right. for a half a second longer. Uh I will say though, I'm really surprised the wars didn't get a low center of gravity, Rachel. Yeah, they should. They should get that. Yeah. <laughs> and also, like, because like you know, low center of gravity, gravity harder to knock down. Harder to push. Yeah, you, right. And then you start exactly. thinking, start thinking of gnomes. How do you knock down a being of energy? 
Yeah, right. It should be just like that uh, that I sand dude want. from Hellboy. I, I trip you, and you're still floating there. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, I, I, you know, it's uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility. I mean, who's to say they, you know, if they could they could implement that for all we know, you know. Yeah. It's just one more thing because, and then again, going back to like the stream thing. So, you know, people always want more, you know, more, or show me what you're doing, show me what you're doing. So down the line, who's to say, look, okay, this is what we're developing. We're going to do this with your racial passives. You know, of course, you'll have the people that'll bitch that they're not all even, you know, mm -hmm. okay, how come this guy gets this and I don't get it? And how come, you know, because you didn't pick that. <laughs> well, the yeah. other thing is, yeah. as you're, you know, as the developer, you have to try to think of think about it. If we were all going to sit down and spitball and figure out what racial passives we're going to give these these class these uh these races, it you can't give them the same one. So you have to think of you know twenty something unique, uh, slightly slightly advantageous abilities. So side note, this is exactly what I was doing like three weeks ago. <laughs> You know, but you know, you know, so you're, you're bound to, you know, you're not going to think of 24 home runs. You know, some of them are be a little bit lame. You know, it's like, okay, that's, uh, okay. I mean, you sometimes know? the lame yeah. ones are good, though. Right, they end up being good. Exactly. Yeah. The thing is, though, if you take, take the halflings, for instance, right, we know that there's three factions within the halflings. But like Boots just said, you're not all going to have the same kind of passes because your identities are different. You are drawn towards different right. things. Some right. you've got you've got one one section of halflings. They're adventurous and and devious, and they want to go out and kill stuff. You've got another one that want to stick towards the traditions of their of their true background and where they came from, and and just stay amongst themselves. And you got so that's already different behavioral patterns. You know, so you know I, I almost wonder if maybe it's time that somebody went and... Um, Scribbles, if you're watching this, I'm sorry that I'm putting this out on, on live. <laughs> but I think it's about time that some developer took, took the passes a little further and categorized them. Like you have racial ones where everyone of that race has the same, but maybe you have mm -hmm. a society passive as well because you grew up in a certain type of society. Right, exactly. right, right. I mean, I mean, like you know, you've got your your humans. Maybe they're city dwellers, and they have a reduction to some kind of merchant because they're just they grew up in a city. They're used to haggling. Well, a barbarian is technically just a human who grew up in a different type of society. Really, right. you know, it's a warrior society. So they're they're going to be a little more aggressive in terms of just how they are passively you know so why shouldn't your re passives reflect that right i mean that's like for example that scar run speed uh boost it, <laughs> in, i mean in theory it's pretty cool i mean you gotta you gotta think of, i mean you gotta yeah. give them something yeah but make it worthwhile i mean what was the the, the parameter are ridiculous. It's like what you have to be with how many other scar? Like you, 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 you scar. gotta have like a bunch of scar around locking arms and skipping through the field. Right, and then, right. And then you run what five five percent faster? It's like a very low amount, right? It's a yeah. very low I mean, don't get me wrong, it, it's cool in theory, but in practicality, it's absolutely freaking worthless. Right. I mean you could I could see like you know a clicky ratio chant yeah. of the scar where all of a sudden now they're, they're chanting some scar song and they run twice as fast that would be cool it would have been it's better not, if it was, not, if it was a, a passive it would have been better if it was a passive where everyone in the group got a, a temporary run speed buff that was increased by the number of scar in the group. yeah exponentially yeah right right, right right welcome right, to the right. next boot show everybody no, but, right. Right. <laughs> but, you guys, but you know i mean why not you know they, the problem is that they're always you know they don't want to give they don't want to give too much to one because you know people are going to bitch about what the other guy got yeah but a passive, a passive that helps other allies is never a bad thing no of course not right because even if it's like oh well i don't have that well you can still be affected by it you can yeah. still gain a benefit from it well, i think the run speed from so star good Unless that passive is so good, you have to have someone of that race in your party. Right. Like, if you yeah. see... If, if, if PvP becomes a big thing... basically. Yeah. Yeah. PvP becomes a thing. Scars are now going to want to group up with Scars only. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I don't, you, see, 
You're going to see Sky Wolf think. packs all over the place. Yep. Which, I mean, for lore purposes, that might be that might be where, what they want. But when you look at the rest of the gameplay, it's honestly, it feels like a passive that was just thrown in because we're out of ideas. Right, right, and right. And we, we right. came up with ideas in what? Ten seconds? Yeah, right. But it's just, just <laughs> bullshit. Right. Yeah. But, you know, whatever. I mean, you know... Something we you've never seen before is that how they make you you know they give the the um I don't know it's not not immunity but you know the um against the disposi the, the different dispositions yeah. you know yeah. that's that was a cool little trick how they did I that like because it. you know they implemented the disposition system so now you have a racial you know counteracting that the, the mm -hmm. individual did. Now, whether or not it's going to make a difference yeah. we don't know. I'm just, I'm very I was very happy to see those ones because it means that they're taking their unique aspects of the game and making them reach out into other aspects right of universal the game. right My it's God. not just it's not, not just a feature it's it's like <laughs> linked towards a lot of different things let's let's move on <laughs> well we'll basically we'll have to definitely plan a show and uh, <laughs> do some further discussion some deep diving. So, Michael, bring us forward, please. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. <laughs> so, everyone who plays is drawn to a certain archetype. So, what is your role? My role, I am a bard. 100%. But, if a bard doesn't make it to launch, I will be a dire lord. Yeah! So, now, the, now the, clinch, the clincher is, because I usually have bard tank because way back when the first tune i made in eq i'm gonna whisper this i made a paladin <laughs> in eq the first tune i made but then i made a bard and then once i started playing the bard the paladin went on the shelf but he was still my tank, my box my box tank so going forward every every game i played i made a bard and if they had a bard i made a bard and a tank so with the uniqueness of the dire lord you know, I just think it's a it's a great idea. I want to tank in my PJs. I want to wear cloth and stand in front of a mob and kick his ass and do a ton of damage. That's what I want to do. But what race I'm going to be is still you know still up for grabs because I don't I want to see the character models because I can't play a, a hinky looking tune. I can't play like if the scars are looking like Skeletor on crack. <laughs> I'm not playing. I, I think you'll be going over. You know, I'm there's, saying, yeah, exactly, exactly. There's an ogre might look like race to play, and I'll play a human. I'll let be a human. You know what I mean? There should be only <laughs> one race that, that that's really good as a as a dire lord. But I have a feeling they're gonna they're gonna look um, <laughs> what's the word? Childish, in a way. Really? I, mm, mm, yeah. Huh. I can't go into detail, but yeah. So if, if, if Bard makes it, it, I don't think. If Bard makes it, I'm gonna most, I'm gonna probably say 95% be an archive. If Bard makes it, because so far what I've seen, you know, I I had never seen the actual in-game character model of an archive, but I found an old stream on Jim Lee, the the illustrator. I found on his Discord, he actually ran a stream with. Um, Brad and Joppa and a couple of people from Jim Lee's Discord, and he was an archive, and the archive character model looks pretty cool. So they did say they want to release the archive model because they thought it looked so great on one of their last streams. I thought it you guys got to see the archive; it's so amazing. So they, I, so that should be coming up soon. The only thing I'm, the only thing I'm, I'm down in, I'm down on is the the blue hue of every race. It's like the archive's blue, the darkness blue. The dwarf is slightly blue. It's like, what's with all this blue? Why can't someone be like tan or you know, I mean, or, or green or something? I mean, everyone's got to be blue, you know. I mean, yeah, it's they, little, should, it's... they should do it per gemstone or something like that. Some yeah. sort of a green, reds, right, black, right, whatever. No, it, it does feel like a lot of the characters, and it might just be the environment they're in, does appear to have a bit of a bluish hue. To... Yeah, everything's blue. But I have a feeling it's just like their environment filter. Yeah, probably. That's probably what it is. Yeah, and I gotta say, though, you and I are kind of on the same page, because the VOT as a guild is very tank-heavy. So while I will have my Scar Dire Lord, if I'm not happy with the Scar, he's going to be more of a 
special event character. Mm-hmm. And then I'll be, uh, I will be a bard for sure. Because I, I, it took me a long time to figure to actually figure out that I enjoy bard. Well, you've, but when uh, I, I like, you've definitely got the mouth for it, Lex. <laughs> <laughs> Let me sing you a song of my people. That's the thing. I'm, I mean, I'm super curious to see their version of a bard because yeah, you know, like so far, everything is kind of EQ based ish. So what are they going to do? How are they going to twist it? I mean, twist it. How are they going to change it up a little bit? How are they going to twist the bar? How are they going to twist the bar? You know what I mean? What are they going to do to make it, give, put a little twist to it? And right. it? I mean, and hopefully it won't be something I hate. You know, but either way, I'm playing it. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think, I think, I think we'll be able to see something <sighs> close to, uh, to Vanguard. But no. moving on. Moving on. No, you can finish that thought. Because I know Yarn's he's looking like he's hes starting to turn a different shade of red. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so the Living Codex is actually one of the better designs we've seen in terms of character advancement, or at least ability advancement. Um, I mean, everything from the systems to just the appearance of it, just fantastic. How do you imagine it being expanded upon as the game gets older? Well, hopefully it does away with the need for AAs like EQ because the EQ got totally out of hand with the, I don't know, what, what are they up to 30,000 AAs or something? The last time I logged in, I think my bard was 105, level 105, and I had like 17,000 AAs. So, I mean, <laughs> what the hell? And I have like five hot bars of clickies and like three of them are a different AAs you can click. So, mm-hmm. if, you know... If they just expanded on the Living Codex and gave you, you know, if they gave you, rather than their standard upgrades, if when you've got, got, got to max level, you've gotten all your ability points, you've chosen all your your finite amount of ability points, you've chosen all of your upgrades, if, you know, when you do like an, almost like an AA system, where now you're doing these, these overboost points or whatever you want to call them, and you can actually customize each, each of those spells. Mm-hmm. With a certain with a certain effect that isn't what their standard effects are are right. you know I'm saying for like a dot for example so rather than just do their their normal upgrades okay on this dot I want to um hit hit a, hit it hits a debuff before the dot hits so mm-hmm. then you you know so now you cast your it debuffs and it dots all in one shot or yeah. you know a cleric a group heal and then at the end it procs a single target heal. Or so, you know, mm-hmm. something like that would be cool to do. And that's, you know, they're going to have to do something because you're going to, you know, when everyone gets the max level and everyone maxes out all their spells, everyone's going to be bored. Daily you know, quest. So you know, they're going to have to do something. <laughs> Dailies. <laughs> right. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's the devil. That's the devil. Yep. So uh, let's go and have a look at, uh, you know, the group setups. We know that. In most of these games, there's always that that, that <laughs> perfect group setup, you know, and, and that's one of the things that kind of, you know, it bugs me personally having that, you know, perfect group setup and everything. Should should it be more about skill than rather than about having, you know, we have to have this class combination, you know, set up together, and you have to be this race for for the group. It should be about skill, right? Absolutely, and I think I think VR is setting it up. Um, they're trying to get it to go away from the the historical, you know, historically uh, perfect group setup because you see they're giving these classes some CC that classes usually don't have CC. Like a rogue has some version of CC. I think the pally's got a little bit of it, and uh, they're spreading out the DPS a little bit. So now you have the dire lord who is a tank, but he's supposed to be able to do some good crit DP, you know, some good crit damage. And you have the synergy. They're they're working with these different classes. Where what is it? The druid and the shaman. There's two cl- there's two classes. There are a couple classes that they're working synergy with each other. Where one ability, you know, uh, bo- not boost, but it works well with the ability of another. Class. So you can tell they're trying to get it to where you don't need your typical tank, DPS, mm. cleric. You know, you don't. You can get away with maybe a. 
you know, not necessarily having a CC class in the group. And, uh, you know, to, to me, I would rather, I mean, I, I would even think it would make sense to even have more classes be a viable group tank. You're like, why wouldn't a monk be able to be a group tank? Because in theory, the, you know, if the monk has, you know, this, these high discipline of avoidance and stuff like that, if you're not getting hit, you're not taking damage. So why can't you just be the tank? You know what I mean? I, I mean, I, I like that, that idea. Well, that way, not, you know, that way you're not bottlenecked into, if, you know, is there a warrior available, paladin available, a dire lord available? Oh, there isn't. So now what do we do? We don't go do anything because we got no tank. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, it's funny you mentioned the monk, though. I, um, you think about it, when a monk doesn't get hit and people are doing, and the other people are doing damage or the other class are doing damage on that mob, they gain the aggro. But if I think about it, if I'm a mob and I'm trying to hit a monk, so, so well, we know Josh is going to be, you know, a monk. I'm trying to hit Josh as an example and I keep on missing, I should be more aggravated towards him. No, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so I mean, you should be able to no, hold no. the aggro because I'm so annoyed that I can't hit this dude that it gets me more aggravated to want to hit hit him. No, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, in EQ, there were, you know, if you got a raid level, a raid geared monk that knew how to play, they could, they could tank any group mm -hmm. content easily, you know, easily. Well, I'm impressed too. You, and they were definitely made for certain situations in raid where the, yeah. the monk had to hold, uh, uh, had to tank uh, some of the bosses. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, those of you that came from EverQuest, Remember how rangers would have, they were a, a warrior and a druid, so they had taunt, they had a lot of right. the defensive skills, but they couldn't tank to save their life right unless they were way over geared. Right. right. You know, it's like, I, I always I always got aggravated by that. It's like, if they're a part warrior, why can't they tank? Yeah. Well, that's all. that all has to do with the soft stats, right? Yeah. So behind the scenes, the stats you don't see, you know, the mitigation, and the avoidance and all that. Which in theory, like, you know, even a rogue, uncle, if you're not getting, if you're stealthy and, or, or agile and you're not getting hit, you should be able to tank. You know, sure, when you eventually do get double, you know, critted, double critted with, with cloth armor or leather armor, I mean, it's going to hurt. But in theory... All, all of a sudden we hear Josh, Josh yeah. over Discord, help me, mommy, it hurts. Right. It hurts, <laughs> mommy. You know, but I'm... Uh, but I, you, know, you can tell, especially since there are claims that, you know, we want to make this game so you can log on for two hours and actually accomplish something. Right. So if you need that perfect, you know, that perfect group, you're not, that's, you know, you you're spending an hour right. and a half LFG trying to get a group, right? You know, I mean, you know, but God, I don't miss those days. No. Not one bit. But, uh, half, that's nothing. That was just an example. I was always tanks, so tanks were always always like, yes! It was either... 11, you could go like three days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't miss that. But I've only got two yeah. hours to play, dude! <laughs> well, too bad. L last week you mentioned that you're, you're, you're kind of a sucker for lore. Yes, I am. I'm kind of curious why you think lore is so important to a game. All right, so I think it's important because the lore is what initially piques your interest before you ever play the game. Mm -hmm. So now you're, you know, you're playing the game, and for me personally, while I'm playing a game, I need to have a purpose. I don't want to just go out and be like, okay, let's just go randomly slaughter these like mobs over and over and over and over. You don't have any purpose. I want a goal that I'm going towards. Whether it be a quest, whether it be some item I want to get, something like that. So I think once you're in the game, if it's a well-designed game and it's, the gameplay mechanics are cool, you know, the spell system is cool, everything, you know, you like the character models, everything like that. That's what's, you know, that's what will initially, you know, continue your interest. But then the lore is also what holds you there because now you want to finish the story. You want to see, you know, okay, I'm doing this. 
I'm going towards this goal. Now I want to see what's going on. Like, who is this guy I'm going to kill? Why? And what's the whole story? So that also, you know, it entices you for the added, for the additional content also. So when they come out with new content, you know, if the, if the, the story is hinky, you're like, oh boy, they're creating this, you know, this expansion is about what? These little rat guys? You know, something, you know, something that doesn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't pique your interest. But the lore is what really, to me at least, it really, you know, it, it's really what holds you there. Right. So then out of all the lore we have right now, which one has you hooked in Monty Moore? Um, I personally think the 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 the, uh, the best written one was the whole uh, keepings of Castique. That whole story, like a story, a person telling a story mm. of a story, is is was all is really cool, you know. And then of course, like Chris Kane made the videos and you know you're like okay that is that's the guy you know what i mean you're like he brought it everything to life but i think uh the, the that's a really good the way they the way they introduced the dragons and the glyphs and you know this 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 keeper of lore is trying to find out you know the, the, the meaning of this dragon language and how it's got these magical powers i mean that's you know, that's a pretty cool story, really. Nice. So uh, you've done some writing of the lore yourself. Um, what does the future hold when it comes to the lore for uh, Pantheon? Uh, and when can we expect to hear from you next on this? So I actually, today, just finished the last page of a comic I made of the story Chris Crane read about the Paladin. Well, actually, the story was supposed to be about a warrior, but I didn't say it was a story about a warrior, so I gave him the story, and he titled it The Paladin. So now the story's about a Paladin. So it's a warrior who becomes a Paladin. That's like a spoiler, but anyways. So that's... Yes, that's a bean! The, oh, right, yeah. <laughs> no, that's the... Uh, that's, I just made. I just finished making a comment. I think it's like... Four, I'm on my 14th page, and it's done. I have like two possible endings... And I drew one, and I kind of liked it, but it wasn't perfect, so I drew another one. But then, like, one of the panels looks kind of weird, so I was like, eh, I don't know which one is going to be the final one. But um, I'm going to do the Bard stories next, I think, in a comic. And then I've done, nice. like, a prequel. I've done a prequel to what would be a prequel to the Bard and the Paladin story, where the, the two characters meet in the past. So that's, that's, and I have those ready, but I don't want to like, you know, like, I don't want to bother Chris Kane with, he's, he does it for a living. So he's really busy. So I don't want to like be here, dude, here's more stories. Here's more stories. Make videos, make videos, you know, because send to him and be like, read it, you know. bitch. Yeah. You know, I was, I mean, it was, the funny thing is it was like on a whim, like I was bullshitting with him in, uh, in the Pantheon plus green room. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had just met him and we were talking about bards for some strange reason. And I said, uh, you know, he was like, what do you think about the lore? And I said, you know, not for nothing, but I think I could probably write a better story. And he's like, what do you got? So I was like, oh, shit. So, <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, I, so like, I, you know, I was like, oh, I really, <laughs> you know, I stepped in that one. So I, I wrote, I know I wrote a couple stories and I, you know, the next day and I sent it to him and, you know, he didn't know me from Adam. So he's like, oh, I'll look at him. So I'm not expecting anything. And then like two hours later, he sends me an MP3 file. And he's like, how's this sound? And it was like him reading the Bard story. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, dude, what the hell? You know, I was like, that's awesome. Yeah. It was, you know, more than I ever expected. But yeah, I have, I've, you know, I have a couple stories kind of like halfway, halfway through where I have like Budrick Brimstone is in it. I have one with Yarnilla is like a kid. That's, a, that's a bad one. Just I have, uh, <laughs> hey, somebody, I have hey, minus, somebody's gotten to it. <laughs> I have minus and, I got like six stories that are like partially written, and I just I'm don't have the time. I'm pointing at you, Lex. <laughs> I have Lex. I have Lex in the one with the Bard and the Paladin. Lexers and he doesn't uh -oh. die. He survives. He uh, survives. Uh oh. And uh, false story. I mean, luck, oh, luck, no, I mean no, if I'm lucky, Chris Kane will you know read another two of them. But I have a couple ready to go. Cool. Sounds like uh, here's a, here's okay, Chris. Coming. I know. I know you're going to watch this at some point. I'm endorsing it, the, the lecture story. 
Come on. Let's, see what, let's, let's see what, see what actually, you got. He's actually cool in the story. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, yeah. As it should be. He's a badass. Right. I love how you put that. He's actually cool in the story. Yeah, he's actually <laughs> cool. Well, no, I mean, like, well, like Minus. You know, I, I, I killed off Minus story, so... <laughs> so, uh, we saw the new mock-up. Minus. We saw the new mock-up of the uh, perception system in play during the last, you know, VR stream. How happy were you with it? You know, with the design so far? Oh, well, you know, I like I said before, I'm a huge fan of the perception system. Mm. I think it's uh, it's ingenious. You know, it's it, it it gives you like a little sidetrack from the normal questing, and uh, I I don't see any downside to it. I mean, as long as they they stay along the path they're on now, and they don't do anything crazy, which I don't see them doing. I uh, I think it's a great idea, and you know, it's right right up my alley because I like to explore like every crevice of the map. When I'm when I'm in a game, I'm like I'm trying to go to places where I'm not supposed to go, getting stuck in the you know stuck in the world, having to rewind. Speaking you know, like of every crevice, how how did you feel about the first perception in Oldwood? <laughs> oh, old, oh, should I touch it? Should I touch it? Should I touch it? That's gonna that's be. That's what she uh... said. <laughs> That should be one of the options, you know. Should I touch it and then have one of the options be that's what she said? And then have the go, I don't deal with wise ass. Just imagine, just now, imagine, just imagine the younger generation, you know, the the kids yeah, playing they, this game, and then they, should, they don't I, go right over their what head. What should I hear? Should I, that's what she said, or <laughs> what does that okay, mean? Here, VR, VR. If anyone VR is watching this, here's merchandising opportunity right here. Where you can get like you know, uh, Fairthal, Oldwood, or something, just something yeah. that kind of like advertises it, almost like a like a very touristy shirt. And on the back, it gave the perception when I said, "Should I touch it?" Yeah, yeah I, I I went to the Oldwood, and all I got was uh, all I got was this perception. <laughs> got Oldwood. Oh, I'm never gonna That's get tired. Of this got one. got milk. Got Oldwood. Yeah. <laughs> If you do, you should touch it. <laughs> <laughs> they make a pill for that old wood. How yeah, you can get it at gas stations. If you've got oh. old wood for more than four hours, see your physician. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, what, my what, what word. No, no, no. What was that Spriggan's name? The one that oh. just all turned into a tree? Oh. If you have hardwood that lasts Vast, for four hours, please was, consult. Oh, the guy was vast something. Yeah. Was like, that was so weird. I thought that was a little weird. The vast. Welcome you know, to the Voice of Sermon Show. Family friendly. <laughs> Deafens or something, yeah. We are family fr friendly if you raise your kids right. Yeah. <laughs> Lex is making the most of his time left. That's right, I only got a little bit of time left. I, t I gotta piss off as many people hey, as I can. Hey, in our defense, right, it's one in the morning where I am, so. Tough luck. <laughs> that's, your, that, that's your problem. That's your problem. <laughs> yeah. And this affects me how? Exactly. No, I'm saying, but I'm saying, it's four I'm saying, here, so. in regards to the family friendly. You say a lot. Right? Come on, go on with the in show. Come, the come on, come on. family friendly, in all fairness, where I am, it's one in the morning, so the kids are all in bed. Oh, wow. Well, maybe, maybe you shouldn't upload this one to YouTube. <laughs> maybe you should upload it to Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Well, I don't want to do both. <laughs> We might draw, an, start we might off my draw shirt. an audience there as well, you know. <laughs> As I say, if I take off my shirt, start swinging it around, it'll do well on Porto for the for the people that like pear shaped men. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. So yeah, at the end of the last stream, we saw the the raid area. I mean, just crazy cool, and we saw the impact that the extreme climates are gonna that or could potentially play. In some of these encounters, how do you feel about these extreme climates and the possibility of catching us off guard? And which one of them do you think you're most excited to encounter? Well, what I would like to see, what I think would be like a microclimate. So instead of having just the entire zone one climate, if you come across some, you know, some area of interest. Where there's an item that might drop or there's a there's a boss that doesn't want you to get near him if all of a sudden there's like a there's a different magically induced climate there so now you have to fight that out of the clear blue sky all of a sudden oh shit or like you're going through an old dungeon 
and all of a sudden, you know, the air becomes toxic because it's all foul with you know, decaying corpses or whatever. And or if you go into like an undead area, all of a sudden the air gets, you know, frigidly cold. So now you have to, you know, you have to have the glyph to keep yourself warm in the cold, you know, in the cold temperatures. Mm. Stuff like that would be cool. Or like to take that raid zone, for example, what if they introduce the climate into a raid mechanic? So now the boss is immune to, say, physical damage. So now you have to lure that boss out and he has to get blasted by those lightning bolts to do oh, damage. God. Damage. I hope you that know, that's or, part or, of that anything, or you have to, you know, you have a toxic area, a toxic area where you have to drag the boss through this toxic zone. So now all you have, you, everyone in the raid has the, you know, the glyphs. So they don't, they're not, they're immune to this, this, you know, this effect. But mm -hmm. now the boss is dying from this toxic air or they're getting blasted by, you know, lightning or, or freezing from the cold. I mean, that would be really cool to something like that. I love those interactive raid encounters because as, as a tank, it's so boring to be like, you just sit there. Yeah. Taunt. Defensive cooldown. <laughs> oh, I well, but the other ones is that were great with the <laughs> death, you know, the death touch ones. Where, you know, you can tell the dumbass that's not using his audio trigger. Because, yeah. you know, oh, Jimmy died the 14th time. Res him again. You know? Yeah. It's like... <laughs> oh. So speaking of extreme climates and stuff, we have seen the new perception system, extreme climates, some climbing, but what would you like to see next? Like disposition, behaviors, racial innates, or race models, like or other various things? I would like to see character models. I want to see the Dark Mare. I want to see the Archive again. Uh, I want to see uh, the Scar, because that's going to determine what you know what race I'm playing because I'm not going to play a hinky looking tune. So I want you know I want to see what their what their iteration is going to be of these different these different races. That's what I want to see. But from what I saw, if they keep the archive the way it was, stream it was pretty quick. But I, I mean the the concept art of that scar, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I drew that a few, the way that should be. I drew a few concepts of the scar. I guarantee I was, you they're better. I went away from like. The, I went more humanoid with, it. like I went almost with like a. Uh, I could show you a picture. I went. It was like a, uh, like an altered human, almost mm -hmm. like you know your skull. The skull shape is is altered from like you know, because they're supposed so to be growing up in this acid environment, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So they're supposed to come from a very harsh existence. Right. Right. And the, and the new ones just kind of look like oh, I'm a bandit with a skull mask. And yeah, really, bad, really on. bad personal hygiene because I got long toes that smoke meth. Yeah, <laughs> like, then there's no part of them that look like they have a rough existence. So that that's the thing that just drives me nuts. Yep. Well, that and the you know the way they're designing them fit on their uh -oh. body with these crazy long, mm -hmm. you know, these crazy long uh, nails and their feet like a mile long. Isn't that going to be difficult to get the armor, the models to? To fit on there? Silence. Yes. <laughs> it's golden. <laughs> so if, if it's golden, then pay me. <laughs> I'm, I'm lying to cut out a little bit, so. So, you've alluded that you do draw quite a bit. Um, and you've already done some work for the Pantheon community at times. Are you open to doing more work for others, and how can they get in touch with you? Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm always open for that kind of stuff. Um, my Discord is Booch1285, and on Pantheon forums, I'm Boocher. B O O C H E R. Boucher. Actually, I just I just got an email from a guy on a, another artist on on. Um, Pantheon's forums that I actually contacted a long time ago, and he's interested about doing something. So I might, I might do something with him. The guy's really good. Hope maybe he'll watch this. His name's Kasseri, mm -hmm. and uh, I saw some of the, you can see some of his stuff on the Pantheon forums. The guy's really good. yeah, I'm familiar. Yeah. Very nice. Cool. Is anybody looking for uh, some artwork or anything like that? You know, we chat. Draw me like one of your French girls. <laughs> 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 so uh, talking about the Pantheon community what do you think 
makes it special over the gaming communities. Oh, like I said earlier, it's like the, the low level of toxicity, I think. And, you know, everyone, you know, everyone's pretty positive for the most part. Even like, I mean, I consider myself Even like Alexa. a... Like a, I, I consider myself like <laughs> skeptic and stuff. Like, you know, if so, like, I don't believe in if... I don't believe in sugarcoating things. So if like something is like, meh, I'm going to say it's, meh. I'm not going to be like, oh, did you see that? It was awesome. That character model looked awesome. If it looks okay, I'm going to say, yeah, it looks okay. Like, yeah, exactly. like we're talking about the codex. I think the functionality of that codex is great, but I've said it a bunch of times. I think the look of it is, but, but that's, is it going to stop me from playing the game? Absolutely not. See, I like the industrial look. So. <laughs> yeah. See, that's, that's what I don't like about it. Exactly. Right. It's like, okay. Mm. But I mean, that's, that's the thing. Something like that is like it's too. It's you know, it's it's a piece Each, of art. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So something I think is stupid, other people think is great. So that's that's you know, that's the way it is. That's why we all have different tastes, and everyone else that isn't me is wrong. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So, are you currently in a guild, or are you planning to form one? Um, if not, do you look? What do you look for in a guild, and how do you normally go about? the entire process so uh a while ago i applied and i uh, for rainborn i'm in rainborn guild right now and the values that i think are important, like i like a act so more than just rating i want like you know when you log on i want to be able to, hey anyone need to get need someone in a group and be able to actually get a group because there's a lot of guilds i was in where you know you, you log on and everyone's doing their thing you know, no one's, you You know, you might be talking them back in the days in TeamSpeak or Ventrilo or whatever you had. And, you know, everyone's just BSing, but no one's doing anything until, you know, raid time. Everyone's, you know, okay, raids are in a half an hour. Then everyone raids and everyone goes back to doing their own thing. You know, I want to guild that we can, like, group together and, you mm -hmm. know, hang out and do stuff together. That's what you I know, think. Because yeah, that's really what the game's all about. Yeah. The, the interesting thing with, with Pantheon is that, from the voice determinist uh, point of view, you know, it may not seem like it, especially to the leadership, but like voice determinist and Rainborn are actually pretty close. I do stuff with a lot of Rainborn people, like talk to them. I go and have lunch with one of the members, you know, well, he, he's moving away, but you know, we game I every week. I wonder why. Because <laughs> you stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it to yeah, you. I mean, too. So even, in, even in, in EQ, there, the end, where, before I retired from EQ, the guys that I had been, I played most with were from a guild from, I mean, we transferred servers. Mm -hmm. We were on a uh, Tunar server, then we went to, oh shit, where we went? Yeah, we went from Tunar to Zegany, and we were all in a, in a, like a mid level guild. And then I went to the, to Mash and Shin, and they stayed in that guild, but it wasn't like, you know, oh, I'm in a different guild now. I'm not going to talk to these guys. I mean, we were in, you know, I wasn't even in our guild chat most of the time. I was in their server talking to those guys and grouping with those guys. Mm. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like you said before, you, you make friends with people. It's like a, it lasts a lifetime, you know? Yeah, it's interesting how things have, have kind of evolved because back in the older days, it wasn't uncommon to only do stuff with your guild. Right. And I don't know, maybe it's just with Pantheon or maybe it's the way that the gaming industry has changed from the, the player's perspective. But I think now I've done more stuff with other guilds in Concerns to Pantheon than I have in any other game. And like, you know, Yarn as a guild leader hasn't jumped down my throat about it. You know, no one else has mentioned anything about it. And I remember back in the day where I was helping another guild kind of break into the rating a little bit and i got my ass chewed out for weeks in all fairness though that's what we're about though we're not about ourselves we're about the community so right. helping helping others is what i you know or what we expect you know what the leadership expects of voc members is to be forthcoming and and open to anybody it doesn't matter if they're you know linked to us or not a part of us, it doesn't matter. So, you know, you're never right. going to get grief from us. Yeah, and it's very nice to see that, that another, another guild, like like Rainborn, seems to have very similar values. 
Yeah, um, absolutely. And, you know, even like in EQ, when, when they would be, you know, some, some guilds would host like open raid night. Mm -hmm. Where they would do like maybe like the expansions before his content or two expansions before content. Well, I always had like my bard and then I'd have my a, a couple alts because there was so much rotting loot when our in our guild from the current expansion. They were they were geared out better than most of these guys that were doing these open raids. So rather than take my all to these open raids and like you know possibly take gear that someone else could use, I would I would run my main. Because it was okay. As long as we weren't doing current content, we could raid anywhere else. I would take my main bard and I'd go help these guys take out this content either with strats because a lot of these guys didn't know these lower they didn't know the strat. And I'd do CC or whatever, you know, for the for the raid. And that's I mean that that's the kind of stuff I want to see in this game, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's gonna happen, you know. That's what I did during the end of my WoW career. I kind of hope I'm kind of hoping that if I get as deep into Pantheon as I think I'm going to, I kind of hope that that's where my personal Pantheon career goes again. To where, when, when I do raid, it's, it's just to help people out. I don't care about loot or anything because the game's fun. Right. And the game naturally kind of gives you the upgrade you need. Not not saying there's any kind of mechanic or algorithm behind that. Just saying that you just are doing stuff. You organically find gear for upgrades. Yeah. You know? And that's kind of what I'm hoping for, because I would love to, like, you know, say VOT raids on Friday nights or Monday nights. And, yeah. well, if I happen to have a Thursday night and I have a lot of friends in Rainborn, who's to say that I wouldn't be welcome there and I can't just go to hell? Right. You know? That's 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 my my hopes and dreams. And of course, there's always going to be those raids. The raid that's a, such a bitch. No one wants to do it twice. You know, you do it that one yeah, time. Yeah, I won't help with that one. Sorry. You know, they're like, I'm never going to do that again. <laughs> I will but come straight out and tell people I will not do that again. <laughs> you always say you're not going to touch it again, but then you always well, at least I always do. I only touch it. You go, you go, you go. Check the websites. You find the one shiny drop that makes you go. Fine, I'll do it. again. <laughs> Bring it on home, Lex. Come on. All right. So the very first time that you log into the game, when it's released, what do you think it's going to be? When it's released, what do you think it's going to be like? Well, I think I'm going to be like a kid on Christmas. I think I'm going to be running around like an idiot, just trying to see everything I can see. I'm probably going to die a bunch of times because I'm level one naked running around. Probably... If it's on a bard, I'll probably be practicing training people or something stupid like that. But I'll put, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just probably run around seeing as much as I can see, not even trying to XP or anything from the start. Because that's how I am. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, Michael, before you jump in here, Booch, relax yourself. Close okay. your eyes. Wait, I got to stretch. I got to stretch. Maybe, maybe take a big swig of something strong. Do it, Wipe this entire show up to now because it's. That was all a load of rubbish. There's only one question that matters. Uh, Micah, bring it home. And that would be, who is the Voices of Terminus host with the most? Oh, this is a tough one. <laughs> this is drum roll, please. And keep I'm in mind, Micah, to... Micah is a host now. I'm going to have to say Yarnella. Woohoo! Uh, how how can you beat the enthusiasm? Like, how can you beat the enthusiasm? Ew. <laughs> and I thought we were soulmates. He gets an E for effort every time. That is like so gross. I should have said who's the host with the most. Oh, so the moment decision. <laughs> there you go. And I, and I just shaved my beard off. Ah, oh. That was awesome. I gotta, I gotta say, the, this, this show has been a long time coming and I'm glad I finally got here. Yep. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bear, see, Baron's on. I think he's on yeah. something. I didn't get it just because I, I kept on the old wood topic and it made it made him uncomfortable. <laughs> now, all right, what's the what's the percentage that, that? What do you bet that they knew that was going to get the jokes it got? The, the should well, I, I guarantee, I guarantee, I guarantee it, up, somebody like, knew. Yeah, right. They're like whoever put that in was like, if we're in old wood, I gotta add something. It's like, should I touch it? <laughs> And to that, one, to that person, I say, well played. Yeah. Right. Definitely. It's 
It's one of those things. Yeah, you, need, you, need, you need funny moments in games. They yeah. can't all be serious. So, that concludes the interview. But, uh... Looks like Lex and uh, Boots had a lot of fun, so uh, we'll have to see if we can get the Joe Pesci and uh, <laughs> Mel Gibson. Uh, <laughs> Never <laughs> order a tuna fish sandwich in the drive. Is that what you always get screwed in the drive? I, I gotta go watch Lethal Weapon now and brush <laughs> up on the lines. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Um, we will be seeing Boots uh, every now and then, coming on and joining us and helping us out, uh, talk shop about Pantheon. Um, next week is still in planning. <laughs> <laughs> One week still, is still a week still, away. We're, yeah, it's still it's a week about away. Preparation, people. It's all about preparation. It's all about preparation. Uh, we're, we're still basically in the right smack in the middle of it all. You know, with uh, Lexa moving on and Micah coming in and planning everything. So we're still we're still trying to figure it all out and. Um, we'll basically let you guys know soon enough what we'll what we'll talk about. We might do a I don't know game night or do. I don't know. You know what game you need to get, and then we can do a game night. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello Kitty online. There we go. No, that 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 community is more toxic. Than Reddit. <laughs> oh, yes, I know from experience. Who knows Reddit? You gained. <laughs> You're slightly better than the most scumbag <laughs> community on the face of the earth. I think the funnest time we have with online doing something online with games, though, um, or at least I have, is with Pantheon Plus. We did Cards Against Humanity. Yep, and I that, that is that was good. Yeah, that's that, 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 that certainly wasn't PG thirteen. No, <laughs> so, I won that though, so it made it even better. But no, <laughs> it was that was that was an insanely fun. That, I'd never played that game before, and I love it. It's fun. Yeah, we'll have to yeah, we got maybe that. Maybe we do that next week. We'll do some cards against humanity or something. Yeah, just have to get good. a need a disclaimer. That's like if you are under the age of <laughs> whatever, you should not watch this at all. I'll just basically turn on the filter, or basically, you know, turn on the uh, mature content indicator. Yeah. Actually, they have an, Lion, they have an elevated version Lion of if you are watching this, you need to make a listener discretion for <laughs> content that is definitely not suitable <laughs> for, for <anybody>. children. <laughs> no, uh, that's what we'll, we should do. We'll do Cards Against Humanity, we'll all get some drinks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You all like drunk, Jan <laughs> Jesus. I'll work on an opening I don't like screen sober this week, one. too. I'll work on that <laughs> opening screen that has viewer discretion advised. For ya. <laughs> it's gonna be rough. Alright, so maybe that will be something we'll do next week, then. So we'll, we'll, we'll basically so, uh, yeah. sort it out. So, anyway, Booch, it was great having you on. Uh, it was awesome. Thanks, Booch. And we'll definitely have to uh, sit down and once we've got our schedule sorted out and we, we can, you know, basically see what topics we'll be doing, you know, ahead of time, you know, just hit us up. If there's something there and you know that you're available and you want to get in, get in on it and in the discussion, hit us up and let us know. Sounds good. Hello, everybody in chat. You know, he, did, he didn't pick me. The show sucked. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Lexi was fired. So, uh, you know, that, that's the truth. Hey, I told I told you, you know, idle hands are the devil's play thing. That sexual harassment suit was bogus, and you know it. <laughs> anyway, have a great weekend, everyone. Uh, have a good night, people. We will see you all next weekend. Have fun with the rest of it, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Laters. Cheers, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.